Hello and welcome to our midweek reflection. It's lovely to be with you again. While outside the wind is howling, you might be able to hear it at points during this recording. And sometimes our hearts and minds are like that, aren't they? We're in turmoil. So as we prepare to meet with God, let's still those hearts and minds. Let's ask him to share in this time. Let's ask him to inspire us and encourage us in our faith. Let's start with a prayer. O Lord our God, grant us grace to desire you with our whole heart, that so desiring we may seek and find you, and so finding may love you, and so loving may hate those sins from which you have delivered us. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Today I want to continue thinking about the so-called I am statements of Jesus, which we find in John's Gospel. Last time we thought about Jesus saying, I am the gate for the sheep, as he contrasts his mission with the religious authorities who weren't leading the people to God. The next I am saying follows almost immediately and continues the idea of people being like sheep in need of care and protection. This picture is also found many times in the Old Testament. The Lord is my shepherd starts that most familiar and tender psalm, Psalm 23. In John chapter 10, verses 11 to 16, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. Jesus draws a picture of commitment and self-sacrifice by the shepherd. The sheep must be safe, whatever the cost, because he knows them and loves them. A wonderful image of God's love for us, worked out through the self-giving love of Jesus. Let's spend a couple of minutes in prayer as we think of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. This first prayer also includes ideas from earlier in chapter 10 about Jesus being the gate and bringing an abundant life, as well as ideas from Psalm 23. Let's pray. Let us give thanks to Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, who laid down his life for us all, saying, we thank you, Jesus, our Lord. You lead us out and we find pasture. We thank you, Jesus, our Lord. You call us by name and we hear your voice. We thank you, Jesus, our Lord. Whoever enters by you will be saved. We thank you, Jesus our Lord. You laid down your life in order to take it up again. We thank you, Jesus our Lord. You came that we might have life and have it abundantly. We thank you, Jesus our Lord. 
you lead us through the valley of the shadow of death, and we fear no evil. We thank you, Jesus our Lord. And the final prayer. O God, our Sovereign and our Shepherd, who brought again your Son, Jesus Christ, from the valley of death, Comfort us with your protecting presence and your angels of goodness and love, that we may also come home and dwell with him in your house for ever. Amen. Thank you for sharing this time. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. God bless and keep safe.